Hello, Dan Harvey for Boris Effects here. In this session I'll be covering a range of colour grading techniques with BCC10 for Avid Media Composer. I'll be working with HD footage supplied by our friends at Pond5. I'll begin with preset based effects, starting with Fast Film Glow. I'll select it from the Film Style group and drag it to my clip from the effects palette. Now it's applied with its default settings. Fast Film Glow boosts and applies a tint to highlights above a user defined threshold. I can also add blur to the selection to simulate lens blooming on film footage. I can browse the supplied presets from the FX browser. These are really useful for editors and designers to quickly create a look and modify as required when deadlines are tight. In view options I'll select Glow. Now I can see the glow effect comped over black. Radius controls the amount of softening. I'll dial that back. I can adjust the tint colour here and the overall saturation of the effect here. Lowering the threshold makes the effect active at lower luminance levels. Under Extras I can set Blending Modes and Effect Transparency to achieve different looks. The Fast Film Process effect provides a broader range of tint and colour grading tools designed to give a film look to video footage and simulate lens misting, cross-processing, bleach bypass and other photochemical processes. I'll show the FX browser here and try out some presets. Once I've selected a preset I can customise it as required and store it in the browser for recall later. If I want to craft colour corrections manually there's a range of primary and secondary colour correction tools available in the BCC colour and tone group, including Correct Selected, which allows quick and easy secondary corrections of user defined colour ranges. I'll select the vegetation here and use Hue Shift to make it look a bit more lush. I can also use the Pixel Chooser to further define the region of interest. I'll use a rectangle shape to protect these steps in the foreground. The BCC Pixel Chooser isn't limited to just the BCC effects. It can be used to isolate any effect placed below it in a composition. In this example I'm going to work with Avid's native colour corrector tool. This provides a colour grading interface which will be familiar to any editor or colourist. I plan to use further colour correctors later so I'll drag a copy of the colour corrector to my bin for easy access. First I'll apply primary colour correction to the base layer in order to balance the shot and get a good contrast range. Next I'd like to work in isolation on the colour of the sky. I'll switch to source record editing mode and copy the clip in Video Track 1 to the Source window by using the shortcut Control alt c Now I'll add another video track and insert the clip I've copied with the shortcut B. Now I'll Alt-drag the BCC Pixel Chooser to my composition to add it above the colour corrector. I plan to use more pixel choosers later, so I'll drag a copy to the bin for easy access. By default the pixel chooser makes a selection according to luminance and outputs a black and white mat. I'll change channel mode to key and switch output to alpha channel, which composites the current layer above the one below, using the pixel chooser mat and mask. I'll sample the highlights and shadows in the sky in order to pull the key, and now I'll show the black and white mat. Next I'll switch to colour correction mode and select the colour corrector layer below my pixel chooser in the effect editor. I'd like to point out that I've skipped a vital step in the workflow here in order to illustrate its importance. 
Note how my matte changes as I decrease saturation in the colour corrector. The key is based on this layer's output, so as I decrease saturation, the sky blues I'm keying off are being removed. I want to key off the blues on an unaffected layer, so I'll set matte layer to first below. Now the matte works as expected on this layer, and I can apply the colour correction to the sky in isolation, without affecting the key input. Next I'd like to apply a vignette, so I'll add another video track with the keyboard shortcut Ctrl and Y. This time I'll apply my effect to filler, by selecting the layer and dragging the colour corrector to it. Now I'll ALT drag the pixel chooser to add that. I'll disable the luma channel and select oval from the mask shape presets. I'll set the size, feather amount and invert my mask. Now I'll go into the colour corrector mode and adjust the brightness. To my eye this vignette effect looks a bit obvious. I prefer to only affect the shadows in the vignette region, so I'll enable the luma channel, invert it, and set the black and white levels so that I'm selecting shadows below the required threshold. I'll switch output back to alpha, adjust my brightness, and view the result, which appears more subtle and organic. I'll alt click on the brightness to reset it, and switch to curves. Working with the curves to affect the blacks only allows me a further level of refinement. Finally, I'd like to bring this monument out and make it glow a little. Once again, I'll add another video layer and add the colour corrector and pixel chooser to the filler. I'll leave channel set to luminance in order to choose the highlights and tweak the highlight level so that I'm selecting just the brightest highlights. I'll grow the area with choke and add a little blur. I'll set the matte layer to first below so that the luma selection won't be affected by my colour corrector. I need a moving garbage mask for this reason so I'll launch Mocha. The message alerts me to the fact that I'm not working at full resolution, which may affect my track. I can adjust this in Avid's resolution settings here, or I can leave it as it is, as I know that Mocha will obtain a good track anyway. I'll create an X-spline shape and trace around the region of interest. Now I'll display the matte and adjust edge width to soften the edge of my shape. I want to protect the engraved panel here so I'll add another X-spline shape around it and set the edge softness. Now I'll change its blend mode to subtract in order to cut a hole in the shape below. The gear icon indicates that both shapes are enabled for tracking, so I'll hit track in order to track them both simultaneously. Now I'm satisfied with my tracking shapes, I'll hit save project and exit Mocha. I'll add a little feathering to the edge of my shape and switch output back to alpha. Now I'll go to the colour corrector, select my curve mode, and push the midtones and highlights in order to achieve the glow effect around the monument. Now I'll review the different layers of colour grading I've applied to this shot. Here's the base layer where I've applied the primary grade. The next layer has the sky selection where I've pushed the saturation. Next I have the vignette applied in the shadows, and the top layer has the monument selection with the glow applied. During this session we've seen how BCC tools provide a range of grading solutions. For editors and designers on tight deadlines, BCC tools such as Fast Film Glow and Fast Film Process can quickly generate pleasing film looks from presets. If we want to finesse the grade, we can use the Pixel Choosers keying and rotosplining toolset and isolate any effect in our palette, including BCC, third-party plugins, or the native tools in Avid Media Composer. Thanks for watching. To find more great post-production and plugin tutorials, please visit borisfx.com.